many times that we will have a graph and by looking at the graph, we want to be able to identify its domain and its range. Now, do you remember which value is associated with our domain and which value or which ordered pair, which component of the ordered pair is associated with our range? Well, our domain is associated with all the X values that are part of this graph. So all my X values are, what I'll do is I'll walk along the X value or the X axis until I start to see my graph either above or below me. So this is the first point of my, of my graph. And this is my last point of my graph along the X axis or as long as the X axis is concerned. So all these values from in between these points represent my domain. This is the domain of this particular function. Similarly, a word I can't say too well, is my range. The range is all the Y values. So if I'm walking up the Y axis, I look to my left or to my right, look both ways. I don't know my left and right. I look one way or the other. I look, do I see the graph? I see it here and I continue to see the graph up until the peak of that graph. So all these values in here represent my range. And so you can identify the range and domain of a graph by looking at it. So let's take an example. Let's look at another graph. And I'll just put some marks on it to give us some uh, distinction. And let's make a graph that goes, let's say we have a graph that begins uh, here at negative three. Oh, let's make it a little more interesting. Let's say it begins right down here and it maybe will continue up in that direction all the way out towards infinity. So what would we say is the domain and range of that particular graph? Well, it's domain, again, are all the values where I see along the x-axis. So it looks like it's right here. And since that graph goes out forever, it goes out forever. So my x, my values of x or my domain are all values of x, x such that um, x is greater than or equal to negative three. And we call that um, set builder notation if I were to graph it in that particular way, or, or not graph it, but provide the solution. Likewise, with no, um, or interval notation, the solution would read from negative three to infinity. I have a hard bracket around negative three because negative three, you notice I have a filled in circle at the beginning point. So that tells me that that position is also a solution. And all my values continue on out towards infinity as this arrow demonstrates that that graph will continue in in that tra trajectory forever. So my endpoint is infinity and we put a soft bracket around infinity if we remember our set builder notation. Likewise, our range, Looks like our range begins here at negative one and likewise continues on up infinity. Although this graph doesn't look like it's increasing, it is increasing, although very slight, but it is increasing forever, just very slow. So how would we write its range? In set builder notation, it's all the values of y such that y is greater than or equal to negative one. And sometimes people put those little squigglies around that. And then in set builder notation, uh, my lowest point is a negative one. My highest point is positive infinity. Hard bracket around negative one, since it is a solution. Soft bracket around uh, infinity, since we can't pinpoint an exact location for that. So there you can, there you go. You can identify the range and domain of a function visually by looking at its graph.